Well hey there reader friends, I'm Erica and welcome back to my channel and today I'm going to give you my January 2018 wrap up. So let's go ahead and get started. In January I read seven books which is pretty good for me. I tend to average about three to five books a month so this is actually a larger amount of reading I did for January which is a very weird way to say things. The first book I read in January, or one of the books I read in January, I don't remember exactly the day I read it, was Black Girl Magic, a poem by Mahogany L. Brown. I gave this book four stars. It's an amazing poem. I love the illustrations and how the illustrations pair with the text. It's like empowering black girls, which I love. I also really liked the dialect of the speaker of the poem. Like I said in an earlier video, I don't know if this is technically African American vernacular English that's being spoken or if it's something else, but it really created a sense of voice and power and like personhood behind what the text was saying. I didn't give it five stars for really one reason, which was that I wanted more. I felt like it was a little short. I felt like it could have gotten a little deeper, maybe. Um, it was very powerful as it stands. Maybe the brevity adds to that sense of power, but I wanted more. The next book I finished in January, I finished really early in the month. I actually had started it in December, but hadn't finished it. I was about maybe halfway through when January started, was The Evolution of Calpurnia Tate by Jacqueline Kelly. I gave this book three stars. The powerful parts of this book for me were how it was a historical novel set in around 1900 and featured a middle grade aged girl who was very interested in science and evolution and the topics and discussion around those themes at that time. She was very invested in challenging gender norms as best she could and had a beautiful relationship with her grandfather. All of those were aspects of the novel that were very powerful, interesting, I really liked them. One aspect of the novel I didn't like very much was because it's a novel of its time in 1900, you're dealing with a time period in which um, slavery and the Civil War is in living memory and you have characters that remember that. And Calpurnia's grandfather was actually a soldier for the Confederacy and there were just some characters that it didn't sit well with me as a reader in 2018. This book is an older book. It came out in 2009. I don't know if this book would be published the same way today because there were basically mammy characters and if you don't know what mammy characters are I will um, try and find a resource or something to link down below because I'm not the most qualified person to talk about it but it just set a kind of mm, bitter taste, sour taste in my mouth. I also didn't like how slavery and the issues of slavery and the fact that Calpurnia's family must have been slave owners just wasn't really addressed and that made slavery kind of normalized in the book in a way that I didn't really like. So that's why it got bumped down all the way to three stars. The next two books I read in January were part of a series. I read The Diabolic by S.J. Kincaid and The Empress by S.J. Kincaid which were um, thick books, but they went fast. Well, that's not really true. The Diabolic went fast. I gave this book four stars. I really enjoyed it. I was surprised. I was not going in with very high expectations. This book follows Nemesis, a character who is a diabolic in this future space set world. And in this world, diabolics are humanoid, genetically engineered creatures that are designed with the sole purpose of protecting somebody. And it's kind of like a political thing. They're designed to protect political figures and political figures' children, and that leads to problems. So at the opening of this novel, the emperor of all the lands, all the space lands, all the spaceships, he's decided that diabolics must be killed. They can't exist. But Nemesis exists still. And then he decides that he wants Sidonia, who is the character that Nemesis is protecting, to come to his, like, palace place, which is risky. So Nemesis goes in Sidonia's place, and that's the premise of the novel. There's also a kind of interesting romance in this book, which I'm not really going to go into because it's very spoilery if I say even the name. One aspect of this novel I really liked and I thought was done extremely well was the characterization of Nemesis herself and her trying to navigate her humanity 
she doesn't in the beginning of the novel consider herself human at all and she thinks of herself as completely separate from humans but then throughout the novel she has feelings that are very human and she has reactions that are very human and she has to figure out how to navigate her identity and also how society thinks of her identity and where the meeting place is if there is a meeting place and she grows so much throughout the novel both in a sense of her understanding of herself, but also her role and the agency she plays within this world. It was really fun to read. Then we have The Empress, which is like right after the Diabolic. There's no time passed. No time passed. It's like boom boom, one right after the other. I gave The Empress three stars. It suffered from second book syndrome, definitely. I feel like it tried to do too much. Not really too much, but just the pacing was very strange. And about halfway through I was really struggling and it almost put me in a slump and that wasn't good. But then the last 50 pages saved it. If it hadn't been for the last 50 pages which made me literally go, whoa, what, what, what's happening? It would have been a two-star read. So if you have the energy, stick it out guys. Stick it out. The ending is worth it. The next book I read in January was The Cruel Prince by Holly Black. All hail, all rejoice, the triumphant return of Holly Black into YA Dark Fae land because this book was so good. I have friends that have read it and loved it and friends that have read it and didn't love it and I think it comes down to if you really love Holly Black and if you loved her before this book came out because I do think this is a bit of a steep learning curve if it's going to be your first Holly Black book. She just kind of throws you into her fey world. She doesn't explain a lot in the beginning. There's a lot of names, a lot of characters, a lot of descriptions of characters. It can be a bit overwhelming, but I love it. Probably my favorite aspect of this book was the political intrigue was done so well and the main character I liked so much and I liked the premise of the story which is that the main character Jude is kidnapped by the Fae as a child and then time passes and she's now an adolescent and she's decided that she wants to be more involved in the Fae world and wants to be part of it but also that like she she's not she's not going to shy away from wanting to get vengeance on those who have been bullying her her whole life except one of the bullies is prince cardin and well he's not the best but he's also really interesting and really intriguing and i'm going to leave it at that. Also the ending, the plot twist, I didn't see coming. I wasn't anticipating that at all. I don't know why because it was set up so well, but I need the next book now. I need the next book now. I need it now. Five stars. Five stars. One book I read in January, which was a reread of an audiobook, was Daughter of Smoke and Bone by Lainey Taylor. I read this first as an audiobook about two years ago and I gave it five stars. But upon rereading it, it's now only a four star read, which I was very disappointed by. Basically, I'm not a big fan of the fact that half the book is like one story and then about midway through it jumps and goes to a different story, but it is connected by the main character and the main character's like world she's living in. Can't say more because of spoilers, but like it's connected but it's not and it's jarring and I really liked the second half of the book more than the first half of the book and when I was rereading because I knew the second half was coming I just wanted to get to the second half which then made me not as invested in the first half which is problematic because the first half is actually what real time is happening. It made it a four star read rather than a five star read. And that's just what happens sometimes when you reread books. The last book I read in January was Saga Volume 8 and I gave it five stars. Of course I gave it five stars. Of course I did. It was so good. I also really like that Hazel, the narrator and the child of um, Alana and um, Mako? Oh, names are not my strong suit, guys. Names are not my strong suit. I'm glad that we're finally seeing her as more of an actual character with like influence on the plot and she's developing and I'm really excited by that and by her character. I just am so in happy that we're getting to see her dynamic with her family and how she comes to be the narrative voice that she is. So those are the seven books I read in January pretty good month. There wasn't a lower than three star read. There were uh, two five star reads. 
I really enjoyed the month. I really, yeah, it was good. It was good. What books did you read in January? Have you read any of these books? Did you think like I did? Did you think differently than I did? Please leave the all your thoughts, all your ideas, all your things in the comments down below. And I will see you next time. Bye, guys. Was the ele 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 evolution, ele <laughs> evolution.